Hello everybody and welcome to Authentic Sound. My name is Wim Winters and this channel is all about exploring the music from Bach to Beethoven and beyond, even Chopin, and with the single goal to inspire you on your journey as a musician or a music lover. And inspiration is what you get while reading. And therefore, in just a very short video here, I want to share with you three books that might be an essential reading for you if you want to dive uh, into the life and certainly into the interpretation and recreating the work and the context of Chopin by your own, which I think is fascinating to do. And in order to do so, the best starting points always are original sources as much as you can. Reading letters, reading diaries, reading um, contemporary writings on the subject. Again, with the it's not a danger, but you have to be aware that the context in which all of this was written is, in Japan's case, almost two centuries behind us. So a lot of things have changed. So for Chopin, what I consider to be three books that, and you have more, but three books that might be essential reading to open aspects of performance practice that might set you in a thinking mode, the first one I would really recommend is this book. And let me take my phone if you can see it. Here, Chopin, Pianist and Teacher, as seen by his pupils. It's written and compiled by Jean-Jacques Eigeldinger. I believe originally published in French, but it has been translated into English. So available for all of us, in fact. I have studied this extensively, really. You can see all my pencil notations. I think almost 20 years ago and what you find in this book are almost all the quotes, all anecdotes, all writings that contemporaries and in this case his students have given us. So this is a gold mine of information. You have an excellent note, um, a, a chapter with notes. So the context in this case, Eigeldinger's context, but it's really neutral. It's, it's extremely well done is given to you um, with a lot, a lot, a lot of information uh, on top of that. What you'll find also in this book, and that's actually a second book already, I have to see uh, where it is, is a translation of uh, Chopin's Sketch for a Method, so Chopin's Piano School. And that's actually already partly an other book here. And there's a second book I would recommend. Frédéric Chopin, Esquisse pour une méthode du piano, texte réuni et présenté par Jean-Jacques Eigeldinger. So that's the same author. So this is in French, and I don't know if there is an English translation. First part of this book is Chopin's own attempt, in fact, to write a piano school. He started doing that, but he didn't finish that. That part has been translated into English in this book. The second part of this book, however, which makes it all really interesting again is the when Chopin died he didn't finish he hadn't finished his piano school so he gave the manuscript on his deathbed to his sister and with the question to give it to Telfson. Telfson was um, was he Norwegian or Scan I think he was a Norwegian player we made an episode on Telfson on the channel uh, Probably he might have played clavichord concerts even in the 1850s. So check it out on the channel. We'll try to have a link here in the video on Telfson. Telfson might be his most important student. We've been talking on Mikuli, which is of course the most known student. Mikuli had a life with a lot of students. Telfson didn't. The life of Telfson might reflect very closely that of Chopin. And it is no surprise actually that Chopin gave the manuscript of his method, the, the piano, um, to his sister with the wish to have it finished by Telfson. Telfson started to work on the project, but he didn't finish it either. So the notes you'll find here are also not finished, but in any way, extremely valuable information. It's first-hand information, rough information. This is also golden information. And thirdly, I would say, if so many letters have been preserved by a musician, read them. 
Um, I myself should do it way more. I would I have for a long time plans to read the complete Mozart letters and Beethoven letters. And probably it's just a matter of organization and priority to do so. But for Chopin, there is a beautiful selection here in the Dover edition. I didn't check, but I can imagine. I cannot imagine it's not available anymore. This is not only very nice reading, you get to know the person so well by their own writings, and also the context where they lived. You, 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 will, you will get a much more authentic, so to say, picture of who Chopin was by reading his own letters. If you are just interested to learn the person Chopin a little bit better, and not so much interested in reconstructing in his way of playing, then this certainly is the book for you. It's Dover, so I cannot imagine it's expensive. Um, also here a lot of pencil rem uh, markings, and reading that is just fun to do. Reading books is today, in our digital age, I think essential to keep doing. I myself, I have to blame myself in the first place. I might, have, I might want to do it more, but just taking a book with paper, you can turn pages, you can go back, you can take a pencil and make notes, like I'm doing now, rereading my notes that I made 15 to 20 years ago. That's something really difficult in a digital book. And, by, and I have the feeling that if the book is on your bookshelf, you can take it, you will take it more than just opening the file on your computer or whatever device you're reading that book on. So, um, and it sticks more into your head, I think. You know, at, here at Authentic Sound, we're all for the analog, which is also one of the reasons why we produce the vinyl disc. So that was it for today. Thanks for watching. If, you, um, not, uh, if you're not subscribed already to the channel, I would very much appreciate your being a, becoming a subscriber for Authentic Sound. Also hit the bell icon, there you can set notifications also for the live streams that will become a larger part of Authentic Sound if we go to the future, to the winter again in 2018. And if you really want to push us over the limits, you might want to consider to become a patron for Authentic Sound from even $1 a month, but you can make a huge difference. We are reaching the number of 80 patrons on Authentic Sound and it's really mind blowing. They are the backbone of everything we do here. So thanks for watching and we see each other very soon again.